It's when you get to have children. You realize how time really flies. But that also makes you appreciate the little things. The hugs. The smiles. A hot cup of coffee in complete solitude. What happens to be, for the next three days, I'm gonna be home alone with the rascals. And not only does time fly, I need to be on top of it. But I don't have a clock. Shit. I need to build one. Now. So, when you're finished with all of your measuring, you go inside, brew yourself a hot cup of coffee, and then you're ready for CAD. But hold on, your clipboard there is a bit blank for all the measurements you just did. Well spotted. The truth is, uh, the clock mechanism from the IKEA clock didn't have a long enough shaft, so I had to get out and get one. I always have a slide caliber in my work desk because if the parts are small enough I always like to bring them in and do the measuring while doing CAD. There are always something you need to remeasure or you need additional measuring and this way I don't have to run to the workshop and back again every time I need a new measurement. And also this is Norway, it's cold outside. And when you're finished designing, it's back to the workshop. Here I'm just trimming down the waste board for later. So no need for measuring here, just plunge and cut. And now for the actual work piece. This is the first time in a long while I have actually bought proper oak materials for a project. Which means I'm not only gonna measure twice, I'm gonna measure three times, four times, five times before I eventually screw it up. But at least I tried. And hopefully I will have some materials left over for future projects. And after I've done all the measuring, I take the plunge saw and I start cutting. But I'm not cutting all the way through because I don't have any supporting material to put underneath and I don't want to cut into my table. At least not intentionally. So the final cut I'm gonna do with the Japanese pull saw, which also gives me greater control of the end piece, making sure it doesn't fall to the floor. Which has happened before. Like a lot. And last but not least, I'm pre-drilling the holes for the screws that are gonna hold the workpiece to the CNC router. Oak is a fairly hard material uh, and I want to make sure that it doesn't crack at the edges when I drive the screws in. Which it did, in the lower left corner. Luckily that's so far away from where the CNC router is gonna operate that it didn't affect the end result. For the hour marks on the clock surface, I'm using a 2mm downcut bit. 2mm isn't a lot of material, so this is by far the slowest part of the process, because you got to go slow. If you break the bit, you might get lucky and just have to change the bit, but if you're really unlucky, you might ruin your workpiece and that will set you back right at the start. So when you're all set, 
it's just to load the right program and press play. And watch the magic happen. And when the hour marks are finished, I recalibrate for a 6mm compression bit. That's gonna do the circumference of the watch and also the guide holes for the guide pins. That's gonna be essential for lining it up and I'm flipping it over to do the backside. And while the CNC is doing its thing, I'm preparing the guide pins, which are basically 10mm dowels. And when the CNC is done, it's just to hammer them home and flip it around. Just takes a lot less time to say it than to actually do it. I also had to trim one of them down, as it turns out it was just a bit too long. And then, without resetting the X and Y axis, I put on an additional wasteboard. It's in this wasteboard I'm gonna cut the four guide holes, so that when I flip the clock over, the back side gonna match the front side. And then, some more height adjustments, or calibrations if you want to be fancy about it. And then some light sanding before we put the clock back on. Just gently tapping it into place. And that was it for the CNC machine. So now I'm just testing to see if the hardware fits. Because at this stage I can always go back to CAD and do some alterations before I do some more routing. After I turn the machine off or reset the X and Y axis, it's gonna be a pain in the ass to find the original zero. But luckily, everything went according to plan. <sighs> Turning off the dust collection is always a highlight of the day. As you can see, I didn't have the CNC to cut all the way through the material. That's because I wanted to make sure that nothing shifted while I did the flip. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna use the bourbon moth method and just remove the guide pins and cut with the jigsaw as close to the groove as possible and then just clean up any excess with a flush trim router bit. As you can see, there's a bit of a lip, but that's gonna clean up perfectly over at the router table. And as I was cleaning up the edge, I realized the straight edge was way too boring. So I broke out the 45 degree chamfer bit and gave it a chamfer on the back edge. That will make the clock pop a bit from the wall and it will give you a nice geometry to look at if you look at it from the sides. And here you can see me mounting the attachment bracket, which is gonna hang it from the wall. And yes, I am mounting this before the final sanding. But it's on the back side. And I can't be bothered to do a lot of sanding there. It's gonna spend most of its life on a wall somewhere. I always thought you needed to be a special kind of person to wanting to become a dentist. But after picking away with what can only be described as a dentist tool, I see that it can be mildly therapeutic. And not having to smell somebody's bad breath definitely helps.
And after our last short run with the orbital sander, we are ready to start assembly. I'll be the first one to admit it's not much of an assembly. You just put the long sticky bit through the hole and uh, put a nut on the other side and you're ready to go. All you need to do now is to put on the hour and minute hands and you have yourself a fully functioning clock. Well, after you put in the batteries, that is. <laughs> 